Hey, this is Carrie with Canary Quilts, and we are on week four of the Dear Jane Quilt Along that I'm doing. I am utilizing EQ8, but if you want to quilt along with me, a lot of people have some old resources for Dear Jane. They've started the quilt, um, or they've thought about starting the quilt, but there is a book, there's some paper piece uh, packets, there's some acrylic templates. I mean, there's a lot of different resources out there for Dear Jane. So if you want to quilt along with us, you can get inspiration from me and do it your way. Or if you have EQ8, you can do it along with me. And I maybe I'll show you how to do some things in EQ8. So I am on week four. I have populated my, um, it's DJ2 progress chart file with the first three weeks. The first week has pictures and I've got a video on that that I'll link down below on how to put your pictures in this graph. And then the next two weeks have the different colors for each week. So week two was pink and week three was orange. Um, and week four is purple. I dropped one. I'm doing purple this week. So I have gone through, you can see over here on the left, I've got the blocks that we're working on. So we're working on C10, I5, M2, M3, and then the border block TR4. And I've already colored them purple because the last two weeks I kind of showed you how I did that. Um, it's really not too hard. If you want to revisit like last week's video, I'll have a link down below to the whole playlist for Dear Jane and you can see how I did it. But I've gone ahead, I put these in my sketchbook and I've colored them purple. So I'm going to put them into my chart and all I'm going to do is click on the block. I'm in the quilt work table. I'm going to click on the block and this one is C10. I'm going to put it in the C10 right there. Next one is I5, which is right here. And then I've got M2 and M3. Ooh, I might have, I need to. You know what? I didn't even think about it. I need to change my color for M3. I don't really want two purples next to each other. So up here is TR4 up in the top um, row. We are doing the rows on the outside in order. All right, so let me pick another color for M3 and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I kind of chose this fall batik that's mostly like olive green. And I've changed my color down here in M3, so I am going to put that in down there. All right, so. That is the population of my week four colors. Like I said, I'm doing that to make sure that I don't get like the same color next to each other. That's what my hope is, is with this quilt. It's, it's, it's random, but I also don't want the same colors next to each other. So I am going to print these out um, real quick, show you each one and how I'm going to do it. So I've already got my M3 in here. This is going to be a difficult one. This is going to be foundation paper piece, but look at all these sections. So it's, it's going to be like foundation paper piece templates put together. So it looks like a mess right now. But I really only need two of these. These are, there's eight, there's four of each. And they're all the way around. So I really only need two. So I'm not getting all messed up here. I'm going to delete the other ones. The rest of these I'm going to save. I obviously need all the green ones. I'm going to get these moved around. I'll be right back. All right, here are the pieces. I've organized them a little better. The K1 and J1 are the eight pieces that go around the outside that are exactly the same. So I only have two of these. I've got these singular pieces here that are white, Q1, R1, S1, N1. Those are going to be, I'm going to use them like templates. So M1, P1, L1, O1. I'm not sure if these are exactly the same. I assume they are, but I'm going to keep them. Whoops. And I'm going to use them as templates. And then I have actual foundation paper pieces up here in the left hand corner. So this is going to be a very interesting, I think, intricate block to put together. So let's see how it goes when we start um, putting it together. So let's get this printed. 
I think one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to print the actual block because all I have are the pieces and I want to print this block so that I can write the sections and the numbers in my block so I have an idea where to actually put these together. So right now it's printing at four and a half inches. Um, let's try six inches. Let's see how big that is. Okay, I'm just going to print this picture and then I can just write in this picture um, where all the pieces and sections are. So when I get to sewing M3 together, I will probably have this all marked up for you to see. All right, let's go into something that's probably a little easier. Let's go to M2. I want to foundation paper piece this. There are a few sections in this one and that looks pretty good. We can just kind of move these around. So F1 and G1, I'm just going to leave them. They probably are exactly the same and I'll just use them as templates. Get this printed. All right, next block is, what block is this? This is I5 and this is going to be applique. So I want to print templates. And this is actually variation two. I don't think I mentioned that earlier because one of them is piecing and then variation one, um, I believe was where you put a big piece of applique down and then applique over top of that. And that's not what I wanted to do. And this one is, um, where you have the background down here in A and then you put this big piece B in the center and then you put these on the outside and then these here, I don't even know what they're called, these petals I guess will be the actual A background. And that's what I want. So all of these are exactly the same. So I, oops, it moved it. I'm gonna delete three of these. I am going to pull this over. And that's all we need. We need these two templates here and we can cut our background. So get this printed. All right, our last center block looks pretty easy. You probably could rotary cut this. I am going to foundation paper piece it. And this is what it looks like. I need to, let's see, let's rotate that, get it to fit. Move it over and I'm just going to space a lot of this out. All right, there is my um, pieces spaced out a little more and I'm going to get this one printed. Okay, the last thing we need to do is our top row four, our triangle. And I like the way this looks as a foundation paper piece, so that's how I'm going to do this one. And this one's going to need a little work fitting these pieces in. There we go. I got them all on one sheet. You can use two if you want. It's up to you. I'm putting them all on one. So that is our triangular sections and I'm going to get that printed and we can get started working on these. We can start uh, sewing them and I think we're hitting a couple of blocks this week that are probably going to be the hardest blocks we've done so far. All right, we're all printed. Let's head over to the sewing machine and start making these blocks. All right, let's get started with week four blocks and I'm starting with the center block and I just showed you, I printed out M3 Fireword, Fireweed Flower as a paper piece, foundation paper piece. But look at this, only these three pieces are paper piece. The rest is just basically templates. This is gonna be a bear to put together. And when I'm looking at this, this is all background color. And I think what I'm going to do is just applique the green parts on. 
I know. I know. I said I was going to foundation paper piece. But all I need to do is cut out these green pieces on the seam line, transfer them over to my fusible webbing, and then put them onto my green fabric, and then I'll show you how I'm going to line these up. So I am changing my mind right now. <laughs> I am going to applique this. And I looked it up and the variation on this one is not an applique either. The variation on this one makes it so there's no Y seams. I'm going to do these two since they're appliques and I'm going to show you how I am going to applique the foundation paper piece I just printed out. All right, so I've got my two backgrounds because they're both white backgrounds. This I5 is going to be purple. My M3 is going to be this greenish color. And I need to cut out my templates. So it's going to be these two for my I5 and the green parts for my M3. And transfer them over to my fusible web that I have right here. So I'm going to get these cut and I am going to transfer them. All right, I want to remind you when you're doing the applique, you cut on the seam line, which is the solid line. Don't cut on the dash line. That includes the seam allowance. We're not sewing these together. We're just placing them on our block. So when it comes to this one, I really only need one of these because all four are exactly the same. It is a symmetrical block. And I only need one of these triangles. I just need four of each. All right, so remember, since we're doing applique, cut on the solid line. All right, I just wanted to show you my fusible webbing. I used uh, light Steema Seam 2. And here is for the I5 Maria's Majesty. These are the four pieces I need and the one for the center. And then this one, M3 Firewood. I need four of these diamonds and four of the triangles. So what I want to do is transfer these over to my fabrics and then I can cut them out of my fabrics. All right, I got my pieces cut. I've got my pictures, what I want them to look like. So when, if we start with this one, what I want to do is I want to fold my background into quarters, which will give me lines right here. So then I can line the points up of my applique with those lines. And it will center it for me. So I'm not worried about that. But then this should work where I can just line the points up here and here. All right, so that one is going to get folded into quarters. This one, or I'm going to press it into quarters. And then this background, I'm going to do the same thing. And then I think I may actually press from corner to corner so that I can get the inside triangles put in. So I'll get these pressed and I will show you what they look like. Hopefully you'll be able to see the press marks. There's this one. Hopefully you can see the press marks in quarters. Then this one ended up being in a triangle. I did it in quarters and then turned it over into a triangle so that I can get all the press marks. There we go. So let's start with the purple, the I-5. Like I said, I want to line up all my points with the folds. There we go. Not too hard. And then these outer moon shapes, I kind of just want to go from point to point. There we go. So that worked. Look out. All 
All right, I went and did all of these the same way I did that first one. And this is what that block looks like right there. So that one's done. All right, so now we have this one. This is probably going to be a little more challenging. So I'm going to start with these triangles. And the base of these triangles hits each one of these seams that goes vertically and horizontally. So that's going to be my goal. And then the point hits diagonal. So hopefully these guides will help me out. And my fusible I can move it. So if I don't like the way it looks, I can pick it up and rearrange it. All right, that looks pretty good. I think I want to bring this one over a little bit more. Give that square in the middle more of a square look. All right, so far so good. Now these fit in here. These aren't exactly a diamond. And you can kind of see that the top angle is a little more spread out than the bottom angle. So it's kind of like the fatter part of the diamond points towards the middle. All right. So I think these, I'm just going to have to eyeball the space. And I want each one of my points to hit the crease. All right. How does that look? I think that looks pretty good. Probably the only thing is this space right here is a little bit smaller than the others. Oh, I know why. Because I have it upside down. Well, that helps. All right, what do you think? That's what it looks like. Let's pull the block out. It's that block right there. That's that one, that's mine. Way easier than fussing around with all those paper pieces and templates and Y seams still get the same look. So I don't know. What do you think about me applicating? Are you disappointed? Am I being creative? Um, I'm happy I did it this way. It is going to be my quilt after all. So I'm going to be a happier person. But anyway, let me know what you think. I know I said I was going to uh, foundation paper piece but it changed my mind and this is how I'm appliquing it and that's how I came up with my applique so anyway I'm gonna get these ironed on and we will be ready to move on to the other blocks all right we're gonna work on M2 Duff's Bluff and that's what it's gonna look like when we're done this one doesn't look like it's gonna be too difficult we've got this piece, two of these pieces, one of the center, and then two of these, and then some outside borders, I guess, if that's what you want to call them. I've cut a piece for this center purple. The little triangles are for here in the border. The big ones are for the center. The little white triangles are here in the border. The large rectangles go in here and on the outside, and then the small or rectangles go inside. So not too many pieces to this block at all. 
So let's put together one of these and one of these. This one's pretty self-explanatory. And then we'll put the whole block together. All right, let's get started with the two pieces I said we were gonna put together. So let's start with the center one. I'm gonna turn it over. C1 is actually in the middle and then C2, C3. Let me draw my lines. We need coverage out here. There we go. So this is C1, this is C2. I am going to, on my C2, mark my quarter inch so I can line it up there. All right, what I need is one of these short pieces because the long pieces go over here. And I'm gonna line it up so it's against that quarter inch mark. I've got coverage on all my lines around it. This is gonna be the larger of the two triangles and it needs to be oriented this way. And since we're gonna be flipping it towards that, I just wanna make sure that it's gonna flip straight and get coverage there. So we have plenty to work with here. So I am going to sew along that line. There we go, first two pieces. Second piece is gonna be exactly the same. Fold on the line between C2, C3. Let's trim our piece. We want our big triangle. We want it to be oriented like that. So again, I'm just gonna line it up with the bottom of this since there's coverage there that I need. And sew on the line. There we go that simple. All right, I'm gonna set that aside. We have another one of those that I will do in um, off camera. So we go from left to right in this one, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. So these are the small triangles. I'm gonna put them together right now because that's how they're gonna go. Turn this over. This is white, this is purple. This is the line in between them. This is the coverage we need around it. So, since white is one, I'm gonna put a quarter of an inch along my purple and just line it up so that I have coverage. We can't see any lines that I drew. We have coverage up there, so. Now we can sew on this line in between the two. There we go. Let's turn it over. Fold on the line between A2, A3. Trim. And this is where we grab our long rectangle. And I need coverage here and here and there. So let's line it up. I am on the outside of the lines with my fabric, so we're looking good. There's the center piece, and now we're gonna do our last two triangles. A4, trim, and Grab a small, show you where we want it. So it needs to be oriented like this. So I'm gonna flip it over and I'm just gonna line it up with my white fabric so that I have space or I have coverage over here. All right, you can see the coverage we need for the white triangle. So we just need to trim between A4 and A5. Add a small white triangle. And I'm gonna line it up with this corner over here and it looks to be in line. This point looks to be in line with that one. 
and sew on the line. All right. They're going in the same direction, which is what they need to do because we're doing these pieces up here. So that's done. I'm going to finish out the other ones because they're exactly like that. And then I'm going to show you how I'm putting this block together. All right, there's all my pieces put together, trimmed up. So we need to put our center together and we just want to line up along these seams right here. Make sure these seams line up. It looks like a couple of them will nest, which helps out a lot. And I'm going to do that and I'm going to um, iron these seams open. All right, I still have these templates. I'm not going to use them. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the pieces I cut and sew them on and then trim them to the size of my center square. All right, these are the pieces I had cut for the templates that go here. I just sewed them on. You can see that they are longer than they need to be both ways here, this way and this way. So I'm just going to take my ruler, line it up along the straight edge of my center block and trim. All right, they're still longer this way than they need to be, but we'll trim again at the end. So we want to put these pieces on and we want to line these seams up right here. So I'm just gonna flip it over. It That one nests, that's good. Line this one up. I'm gonna pin it. I'm going to sew it. I'm going to sew both sides on. I'm going to be ironing towards the, I'm going to be iron open. I'm going to iron it open and then we'll come and trim this section off. All right, CT Patriot's Lantern. And this is what we're going for right there. That's what it's going to look like when we're done. We have a lot of the same types of construction here, just different sizes. These here on the outside are all the same. Then we have these two, which are the same, and then that one. So this one's pretty straightforward. It's just strips. So I think I'll put these two together and show those. That's This is just strips too. Maybe I'll do all three of these. I'll just do all three of these here. So what we've got is we've got these strips, the longer rectangles, which are going to be and all these outside strips right here. This square is the center. These shorter ones are inside the center here. These are shorter rectangles. The squares are in the corners, these small squares in the corner, and then these triangles are these tiny little triangles in here. That's the white. The purple are these strips, the squares are inside these strips, and the triangles are right here in the center. So let me get set up to do these three um, pieces. All right, here's the three pieces I'm going to be working on. I'm going to start with this one, and the number one is in the middle, then two, then three. So here's in between one and two, here's in between one and three, and then I'll draw our outsides. Well, the outside's basically the paper. So what I need is a purple rectangle. Let's do the quarter inch into I2 so I know where to put it. All right, so. I'm going to line that up on the quarter inch and I've got, obviously it's outside the paper so I'm doing good there. I'm going to take the shorter one of the whites, the rectangles, put it in and or line it up with the purple and then sew on the 
line in between, and then I am going to repeat for the other side. All right, you can see I have plenty of coverage. I'm gonna go between one and three, trim. Grab another one of my shorter rectangles, line it up on my purple, and sew, and we'll be done with this piece. All right, doing good. Can't see any paper. So we have coverage. All right, let's do this one. This one starts with A1 in the middle, then A2, A3, A4 over here, A5, A6, A7 over here. So let's turn it over. This is between A1 and A2, and basically the edges. This is in between two and three, and this is a purple and this is a white, so that I don't get confused. All right, so I need a white. I'm gonna use one of the longer pieces here. I think that's what I cut it for. And then a tiny little purple. I'm gonna just lay this a quarter of an inch over. I can't see the paper, so I have coverage. And my purple needs to be oriented like that. So let's flip it over, line it up with the white corner and sew on the line. There we go. Let's turn it over. Let's flip it on the A, between A2 and A3, and trim. And then we're gonna take one of our small white triangles, and I'm going to just line it up in the corner right here. And you can see we have plenty of coverage. That's all we need to cover. All right, I'm a little off, but I do have coverage within the seam allowance that I believe is good enough. So let's turn it over, go between the A3 and A4. Trim. And we need a white square. All right, there's the first half. Let's go over here, go between A1 and A5, trim, that's a pretty good piece. Let's just show where we need coverage, we need a purple triangle oriented like that, so flip it over, line it up with the white and sew on the line. Let's go between A5 and A6, trim. That's what it looks like. Grab a white triangle, and again, I'm just gonna line it up with the purple. Sew on the line. There we go. Let's fold between A6 and A7. Trim, and we need a white square. And there we go. There we go. When that's trimmed up, we're going to have some of the tiniest little half square triangles I've ever seen. All right, this one should be easy. C1 is in the middle, C2, C3, C4, C5. So I'm going to put a quarter of an inch line on C2. Whoops, I need, why, uh, maybe there's a seam? That's interesting, I didn't notice white against white. It's like we don't really need a seam, but maybe just for looks we need a seam. Hmm, anyway, C1 is the big square. We're gonna put it there. C2 is the white strip. And that's gonna go against that. Interesting. So we have coverage all the way around. All right, there's our white on white. We get to add our purple. Fold, trim. Purple strip, sew on the line. There we go. 
I am going to repeat that exact same process for C4 and C5. For the three sections, basically the three sections in this block. So I'm going to finish out my block, get them trimmed up, and then we'll come back here and put it together. I think it's going to be pretty. All right, there are all my pieces and I've laid them out. Looks crazy, but we need to put these five pieces together. And then we need to, whoops, just trying to clean that up. And then we need to add the, these two pieces onto this section. And then this is going to go on the outside. So when we add these two pieces right here, when we add these outer section pieces, we will have seams that line up right here and right here. Other than that, there are no seams we need to line up. So let's put this together. Line those seams up. Let's pin it, let's sew it, and let's iron these seams open. Oh, it broke. All right, we're shrinking that center up. Now we just need to add these two pieces onto here. And again, I'm gonna iron these open. All right, we really shrunk that center down. So now we need to add these two to the outside of this center piece. And again, I'm gonna iron it open. All right. Last thing we need to do is add these to the outside. And again, I'm going to sew them on and iron them open. All right, there's our C10 Patriots Lantern. That's what mine looks like. That's what Jane Stickles looks like. All right, we got one more center block to do this week. All right, last block this week is our border block, which is T4 Bennington Cross. That's what it's going to look like when we're done. So, we got several different types of pieces. Most of them are the same. I think that I will do this piece, this piece, and this piece. It's pretty representative um, of what there is in this block. You, if you know, if you can see how those three pieces are put together, you can pretty much put the rest of it together. So we just have several pieces here. These skinny pieces are what's going here. The big squares are going to go in this these corners. It's going to be this piece. The big square is going to be that piece, which is actually the one I'm going to be doing. Uh, we got some rectangles, which are right here, and then we also have some large and small triangles. Same thing with the purple. This long piece goes here. I'll probably just add that at the bottom and cut my cut it to size. All right, let me get this ready to go, and we'll start putting it together. All right, let's get started with this piece. So we need the bigger triangle and two of these bigger medium size squares <laughs> so we have d1 then d2 then d3 let's get it marked so that's purple we need a white corner outside so our purple's easy we can set it up right in the middle. I've got it a quarter of an inch. Let's add our two and a half inch square. And if we look at it, folding it this way, we should have plenty of coverage. We do, we have plenty of coverage. So, I think think we actually could have made this smaller. All right, I'm going to change my dimensions to two and a half by one and a half instead of a two and a half inch square because we have plenty there. Let's go over to D3. Let's trim it up. We'll add our other square on, making sure we'll have coverage. All right, there we go. 
There's that first piece, sort of like a flying geese with this extra coverage down here. So then let's do this one. And we need one of the bigger triangles. So it's H1, H2, H3. Let me mark what we need. Purple, white. So the purple's easy to place. And I'm gonna place it a quarter of an inch over this line where we're gonna be sewing. And then the white is actually one of these smaller squares. I'm just gonna line it up like that. It's gonna get flipped, so we wanna make sure we have coverage there and we will have plenty of coverage over here. There we go. Let's go to H3. This is gonna be one of the big two and a half inch squares again, actually. So for H3, we're gonna be using one of the big squares. We need quite a bit of coverage. See how this fits once I put it on. But we need coverage out to here. And we're on an angle, so we need the coverage. So I think a three by no oh gosh one and a half again would work here so I'll, I'll make the changes there it's so hard to tell sometimes with these that are on an angle all right those two are done now we got this little teeny tiny one and we've got e1 e2 actually i changed it to e1 e2 e3 and then e4 e5 I want to start, I like to start with the center triangle personally. So let's get that drawn. It doesn't matter which way you start. Okay, we need purple and we need white. That's our coverage. So we're gonna take the smaller purple and it's plenty big, so make sure we have coverage and that we're a quarter of an inch over this line right there. And I'm gonna take a small white. It needs to be oriented, yep, this way. When it gets flipped, that is correct. So I'm going to lay it down like this. We're going to sew on the line. There we go. Now the other little tiny white triangle goes on. So we're going to go between E1 and E3. Trim. And this one is gonna go on like that also. So I'm just gonna center it. All right, there's our little flying goose unit. So E4 is on the bottom. I need to trim this up. And that's what this piece is for. And we need coverage in between those lines. Now, all we have left to do is the side, E5. And that is purple. And that's what this is for. And I think I made that plenty big. Wait. There's small ones and large ones. All right, I need the small ones for sure. So we need coverage here. All right, there's that piece. And that's pretty representative of all the pieces that are in here. So I'm gonna finish it up, get them trimmed, and we'll put the block together. Okay, I've got all my pieces made and I've got them trimmed and I've got them laid out, pretty easy to lay out. We've got A, B, C, D, E, F, this is G, it's just a purple strip that goes in there. H, I, and J. So what we have to do first is put together our E and F, 
and our H and I. It's pretty simple. It's a straight seam. So I'm going to get those sewn up and then we can flip these over and start putting them together. All right, I got these two sewn up, so let's flip this over. See what we got here. Remember, that's what we're going for. So, I don't know, we could start from the top, move to the bottom, maybe we'll do that. Start at A and go through to J. So. Putting it together so I have two equal little tails on each side. All right, there's A and B. Now we're going to add C. Let's turn it over so we can see the tails. Again, just give yourself a couple of equal little tails on each side. There's C. I am ironing my seams open. We'll go D again, or D next, and again, leave yourself some equal tails. So I'm going to get the next two put on and then I'll show you about G. All right, so my G piece is from seam allowance to seam allowance, one and one eighth inches this way. So I'm going to cut this down to one and one eighth inches. I thought I would be sewing this to the bottom. I didn't look at it, so I made it bigger. I will save that piece for later. It is too long. That's how I'm going to sew it on, and then I'm going to trim it according to the angle here. Okay, there we go. Iron that open. So I'm going to put my ruler right along my edge and cut. Do the same thing over here. There we go. Let's see. All right. There we go. And that's my G piece. Next is my H and my I. Line it up. Leave yourself some tails that are equal on each side. And sew her up. Last piece. Same thing. Give yourself some even tails and sew it together. All right, there we go. T4 Bennington Cross. I really like this block. I think it's the contrast of the purple and the white that makes it really pretty. And uh, I really like it. And I'm just hanging on to the what I cut off from there. And I, for some reason, I cut some extra pieces. So this is going into my scraps in case I need it for future, especially the white. For future blocks. All right, there we go. Week four blocks are done and um, not too hard. A lot of fun to put together. This one I was going to foundation paper piece and I decided to applique it and I'm really happy I did because I think this would have been a nightmare. Like last week's paddle wheel has um, given, a, given a few people I know trouble, uh, including me. So I'm glad that I switched this up to an applique. I think it looks exactly the same and I don't have a lot of seams to fuss with. So I still don't know how I'm gonna applique. I've been toying with the idea of maybe hand sewing some applique on, but I don't know, I'll let you know in the future, but right now I'm just leaving them as they are until I do decide how I wanna do it. So that was a lot of fun. Thanks for following along. Let me know how it's going for you. You can post your blocks on social media with the hashtag DearJaneQAL and um, I can, we can all see them. Not just me, but we can all see them and um, I can share them on my channel. So anyway, let me know. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button notification bell and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.